Tyrese Halliburton is one of the more polarizing players in the NBA when it comes to fans. On one side, you have people who believe he's a future top three point guard, maybe even future superstar, and he's better than just about every other young point guard in the league. On the other side, you have people who think he's overrated, not as good as his stats suggest that he is, and the numbers are inflated. When the discourse is like this around a player, the truth is probably somewhere in the middle. And you can probably tell by the title of this video that I think both sides of the discourse are wrong, which is what I want to talk about in this video. But quickly, before we go any further, if you're new and like basketball, I would really appreciate if you would like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I release a video. I make videos about basketball all the time and liking and subscribing are the two best ways you can help me out in the YouTube algorithm and help me reach my goal of 10,000 subscribers. Let's try and get 100 likes on this video so YouTube will recommend it to others. Anyways, let's talk about Tyrese Halliburton. I want to start by talking about why I don't necessarily agree with his supporters and some of the heights his supporters think he can reach as a player. Mainly because I want to get it out of the way because I do like Halliburton a lot and have way more positive things to say than negative. But the reason I'm hesitant on Halliburton being this superstar offensive engine is the self creation and advantage creation within that self-creation. Now, I wouldn't say that Halliburton is a bad self-creator by any means or a bad player in terms of creating advantages. I think he's good in those areas. I would say he's shown noticeable improvement in those areas over the years, but I still don't think it's quite at the level you need it to be in order to reach the heights that some believe he can. It's not that he can't dribble, because he can in fact, I would say that area has shown a lot of improvement that's encouraging because it was a question about the handle and his ability to create coming out of college. And it's also not that he can't create for himself because he can. I mean, he averaged 20.7 points per game under 50 for the 90 last season. But there are certain levels of handle, creation ability, and or freakish athleticism in terms of space creation that you have to reach the threshold of in order to get to the heights that some of his supporters believe he can. And I just don't think those things are quite good enough to reach those levels even if he is good at them. Self-creation, handle, and athleticism in certain cases is why I'm higher on Lamelo, a man, and Scoot as primary playmakers. And also why I don't really see the argument for him over guys like Trey Young or Darius Garland. Those guys have advantages in those areas that make me slightly higher on them as players. I think Halliburton is a really good player. I'm not saying that he's not good. But I do think there are some key areas that other young point guards are better in that give them an advantage either flat out right now because I think those guys are just better than him or guys that have potential to be better than him. Now with that being said, I disagree with his detractors as well. In fact, I would go as far to say I disagree with his detractors more than I disagree with his supporters. I don't think he's an empty stats player. He was uber efficient and productive. 20.7 points per game, 3.7 rebounds per game, 10.4 assists per game, 49, 40, 87.1 splits, 62.42 shooting percentage. He's the first player in NBA history to average at least 20 points per game and 10 assists per game on 40% from three. And it is clear he does have a positive impact on the Pacers. The Pacers were a 28 and 28 team when he played this past season. They were a 7-19 team when he didn't play this past season. He led the team in offensive win series, win series, offensive box score plus minus, box score plus minus, and value over replacement player, and it's not even close. These are stats that require context. You can't just take them at face value because they are influenced by other players on the team within the lineups you play with. But the context does back up Halliburton being that valuable to his team. 
They were a 500 team when he played. They won just 26.9% of their games when he didn't play. He was second on the team in usage rate behind Bandic Matherin, and compared to Matherin, it's not even close. Halliburton's PER was 10.5 higher, his true shooting percentage was 5.8 higher, his offensive win shares were 5.4 higher, his win shares were 5.8 higher, his offensive box score plus minus was 8.2 higher, his box score plus minus was 10.9 higher, his value over replacement player was 5.4 higher. Now I'm not saying Matherin is bad and doesn't have potential because I like Matherin a lot. But he was a rookie that struggled and that was to be expected. I think the context provided though is enough to suggest that Halliburton was a major positive impact on that team and kind of debunks this narrative that his stats were empty just because the team overall had a bad record. Halliburton to me is the perfect guy to have on a contender for a few reasons and that starts with his 3 point shooting. Halliburton has been one of the best 3 point shooters in the NBA the moment he stepped onto an NBA court. He's never been below 40% from 3, he's a career 40.8% on 5.7 attempts, this past season he was at 40% on 7.2 attempts per game. The form is funky, but it clearly is effective. And we saw it with the numbers, and we even saw it in the three-point contest. He's capable on and off the ball as a suitor. In Sacramento, he showcased his catch and suit ability as he saw 43.8% on 2.8 attempts in terms of catch and suit threes as a rookie. While with the Pacers, he showcased his pull-up suiting ability. 40.4% on 3.1 pull-up threes per game in year two. 39.7% on 5.5 pull-up threes per game this past season. Being able to hit threes in multiple scenarios is even more valuable than just being a good shooter. He's one of the best shooters in the NBA, which gives him immense value as a guard. Halliburton is also a great playmaker and one of the most efficient playmakers in the league. A 4.16 assist to turnover ratio is incredible for a guy averaging double digit assists per game. He has elite court vision, he has elite accuracy, he's a high field playmaker, he makes incredible reads, he's improved his handle to the point he can handle those primary reps consistently. Now, does he sometimes look a bit extra with his no look passes? Yes. But I do think he has really good pass manipulation despite that. He's good at using behind the backs, sod fakes, pass fakes, jump passes, and no looks. And in fact, with the jump passes, that is really what makes him stand out in my opinion because he's better at it than anyone else in the league. It's really unorthodox to be as good at jump passes as he is. Now, I will say in terms of his pass manipulation, it's not quite as natural as we see with guys like Luca, Lamelo, Trey, or Garland, but those are some of the best in the league in terms of pass manipulation. And at the same time, he still is good at things like that to create advantages. Like with all my thoughts on Halliburton discourse, his ability to manipulate defenses falls in the middle. He's not as great at it as some people who post the highlights of him doing it suggest that he is. He's also not someone I would say just stares at an open suitor and then does the no look pass. He does it sometimes, a lot of players do it sometimes. And it's not nearly to the extent that his detractors claim he does it on tape. Because on tape, he does so he's a lot of really good pass manipulation technique. I wouldn't say that he's elite, generational, or like great at it, but he does so enough trades on tape for me to believe it is a positive intangible in his playmaking. But while he's good at pass manipulation, he has the vision, he has the accuracy, he has an unorthodox but effective style with his jump passes, He's efficient, makes great decisions. Where I think Halliburton brings his most value as a playmaker is his versatility. Halliburton is good enough to handle primary reps. It's not an elite handle, 
but it is good enough. It's good enough to create offense for himself to an extent. It's good enough to handle those primary reps. But he also has elite connecting intangibles as well. He's very comfortable playing off the ball and making those extra reads off the ball. Being able to handle primary and connecting reps is very valuable. And Halliburton has it. Halliburton gives you a ton of lineup and role versatility due to his comfortability on and off the ball, which is what I believe makes him such a valuable player. He fits in multiple roles with multiple lineups, which gives the Pacers real flexibility in how they rebuild. Having a 23-year-old all-star caliber cornerstone that's lineup and role versatile allows them to focus on adding the best talent possible and not worrying as much about fit concerns. I'm not as high on Halliburton as some are. I'm also not as low on Halliburton as some are. I think he's going to be a great player. He's well on his way. You could argue he is already. He's an impact on winning basketball. It's clear that when you look at the Pacers with him and without him that he makes them better. I think he does have potential to be borderline all NBA good. I think if you build around him properly, he can be the offensive engine for a contender. And I do think the Pacers have done a good job of building around him. I think they've gotten players that fit well next to him. And I think that the great thing about Halliburton is that when you are looking for guys to put around him, you don't have to worry as much about how his play style might class with other great young talent because he fits with anyone on a team. That's why he's so valuable. He's a cornerstone. He is somebody that I think can be an All-NBA guy in a few years. Maybe even as early as next year, we'll see. I think the Pacers are going to be a really fun team to watch this season. And a lot of it is because of him. Because he's really fun to watch. I think if they add a piece or two. And the other young talent they already have continues to develop. They're going to make a lot of noise in the Eastern Conference in the foreseeable future. And I could very well be wrong about Halliburton. It wouldn't be the first time, and it probably won't be the last. He's proven me wrong at every turn. I was wrong about him on draft night. I was wrong about him even after I realized that he was probably better than I thought he was going to be entering the league. I was wrong about what his ceiling as a player is because he showed a lot of improvement since entering the NBA. And I wouldn't be shocked if he proved me wrong. It wouldn't shock me if the world were... He does become that superstar top three point guard exists. But we do have to base what we think a player is off what we see, not off the hypothetical, because there really is nothing to back up the claim other than the fact that I've been wrong. Everything on tape suggests that he's going to be a really good player, borderline all NBA, but not quite a superstar. And I think that's a fair assessment of him right now. He's not quite as good as some think he is. He's not quite as bad as some think he is. He's a really good player. He's really fun to watch. And I think that both sides of the discourse around him need to be way more honest. I think the side that supports him needs to be more realistic. I think the side that detracts from him needs to be more respectful towards what he is as a player because he's a great player but that's the end of this video if you made to this point thank you so much again haven't already like subscribe hit notification bell i'm notified whenever i release a video i make videos about basketball all the time so liking and subscribing would be the best way that you can help me in the youtube algorithm now me reach my goal of 10,000 subscribers let's try and get 100 likes on this video so youtube will recommend it to others let me know what you think about Tyrese Halliburton. How good do you think he is? Do you think that he can be a superstar? What do you think his ceiling is if you don't think he can be a superstar? What are your thoughts on him? Let me do all that in the comment section below. But with that being said, have a nice day. And I'll see you guys in the next one.